It's that time of the year again. A new version of Android is here. Yes, Google has dropped the first beta of Android Q and it packs some really interesting features. So let's take a look. Hey guys, this is Rupesh from bbomb.com and we have the first beta of Android Q installed on our Pixel 3 XL here. So let's take a look at some of the most exciting features in Android Q. Now before we get started, I'd suggest you to hit the bell icon to get notified every time we post an awesome new video. Now that you've done that, let's talk about Android Q features. We have been wanting a native screen recorder in Android since a long, long time now. And well, it's finally here with Android Q. Now Android Q's native screen recorder is not enabled by default. Instead, you have to go to the developer options, then go to the feature flags and enable it. Now once you've done that, you can open up the power menu and long press on the screenshot button, which will bring up this weird looking screen recorder menu. Here you can enable mic sound recording, show taps and just start the screen recorder. There's no option to record internal audio or any of the features, but this seems like a feature that's still in the very early stages. Because while it worked fine on a Pixel 2, things weren't the same with the Pixel 3 XL. On the Pixel 3 XL, when I tried to stop, pause or cancel the screen recording, it would just not do it. Instead, the screen recorder just goes on recording. Well, this will surely be fixed with future Android Q updates. Android Q brings a couple of handy options in the Wi-Fi menu. First of all, you can now share a Wi-Fi network via a QR code. All you need to do is just go to Wi-Fi settings and tap on the network you're connected to. There's the new share option here, which shows you the QR code others can scan to join the network. Now, as you can see, there's this QR scanner icon in the add network option, which lets you connect to Wi-Fi networks by scanning QR codes. It's a nice addition. Now, apart from this, Android Q now uses randomized MAC addresses by default instead of the optional setting in Android Pie. Android Q also brings one of the most highly requested features from users. I'm talking about theming. The theming options are currently available in developer options and you get three options here. The first option is the ability to change accent color. You can choose between device default, black, green and purple and these accent colors reflect across the system in the settings, quick settings and other menus. The second option is the font option which includes a new font now and it's pretty bad but yeah we should see more options with Android Q updates. Lastly, there's the icon shape option, which has obviously been here for quite some time now. So yes, the theming options in Android Q aren't very extensive, as you can see, but it's a start and it should definitely get better. A lot of Android apps are infamous for taking up unnecessary permissions and running in the background. And while Android Q brings changes, that should fix these issues. Now, the biggest change here is how Android handles location access. There's a dedicated location option in the settings page now, and unlike before, you can now decide whether you want an app to have access to your location all the time or only when the app is open. So no more background location access for apps that you don't trust. Plus, I like how the location page has sections to show you apps with access, apps with access only when open, and apps that you've denied location access. Apart from that, Android Q will also limit access to photos, videos, and other files to third-party apps. Not only that, Android Q will also prevent apps from launching any activity while in the background, which is definitely great. The dark mode is here. Yes, Android Q's first beta brings a new dark theme that is supposed to work system-wide. Clearly, there's no option here to enable the dark theme. Instead, you can enable it by enabling the battery saver. I know it's weird, but it enables the system-wide dark mode, which even with its problems right now, looks pretty good. And since this is a system-wide dark mode, it also automatically enables dark mode in apps that support it, like the new Files app, the Phone app, etc. I mean, it's obviously a work in progress if you see apps like Google Photos. And it does not enable the dark mode in apps like YouTube and Messages, which have the feature. But hey, there's quite some time to go before Android Q releases, so hopefully Google will refine the dark mode to work well in every app. A freeform mode is something Google has been testing in previous Android versions. And with Android Q, you can finally try it out. There's an enable freeform Windows option in Android Q's developer options that, well, enables the freeform mode. Now, once you've enabled the mode, you can go to the recent screen and run an app in the freeform mode. Look at this. Now, this looks pretty cool, right? 
I mean, I tried a lot of apps in the freeform mode and they run fine, even though you can only run one app in the freeform mode at once. But yeah, this is cool and hopefully Google won't remove this feature with future updates, since this will definitely come in handy on large screen devices like say, foldable phones. Apart from all the features I just talked about, Android Q brings a lot of minor changes and a lot of minor features. Let me just show you some of the interesting ones. So first up, there are a few added options in the notification shape. In Android Q, press holding a notification now shows you a new show silently option. Plus left swiping on a notification now does not remove a notification. Instead, it shows you the snooze controls. Now next up, Android Q also brings a new revamped share panel, which seems a little faster and slightly more refined. The Files app has been revamped too, and it now features the same material design theme that other Google apps boast of. There are a lot of other minor changes here, like the fact that you can now see estimated remaining battery life in the notification shade, the undo option when you remove icons from the home screen, the redesigned app info page, the fact that screenshots now show notches and curved corners, and more. So yes, there are a lot of changes and features in Android Q. Apart from that, Android Q brings support for foldable phones and a lot of other developer-centric features. So if you want to know all the changes and features in Android Q, you can check out our article on the same from the link in the description down below. So which is your favorite Android Q feature? Tell us in the comment section below. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.